After poor decision-making by Tori Lovello and sloppy execution by the team, the D-backs have no one to blame for their series finale loss to the New York Yankees but themselves. You are Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening to who? The always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer, so please check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com to see all of my latest work. We're going to be talking about that sloppy, sloppy game by the D-backs and their manager, Tori Lovello, in the series finale loss to the New York Yankees. We'll talk about how the how the back end of the rotation needs to step up against the Atlanta Braves and the D-backs needing to stop all these base running mistakes. But before we get into any of that, I first want to tell you guys that today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit available to all U.S. customers. And don't forget, thank you for making Lock on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free. It's available on all platforms, so please please continue to tell your friends. One of those platforms is YouTube. Please hit subscribe to Lock on Dimebacks on YouTube. Our goal after the offseason is to hit 2,000 subscribers now by the All-Star break because entering the offseason, it was to hit 1,000 by opening by opening day. You guys are fantastic. You guys crushed that. So now we want to hit 2,000 subs by the All-Star break. So please hit subscribe to Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube. Now let's get into the actual podcast and talk about that sloppy game by the D-backs in the series finale loss to the New York Yankees because that was a very winnable game by the D-backs, but poor execution by the pitchers, their lineup, and their manager led to that loss. And we'll first start with Toy Lovello because I think he's probably the main story of this game as to why the D-backs lost because he just made some really questionable decisions which led to the D-backs not having anyone to bat at the end of the game with bases loaded two outs in extra innings the D-backs had to let Scott McGuff go up there to the plate and take some swings with the game in the balance a relief pitcher who hasn't swung a bat since he was back in Japan in 2019 how did the game come down to that kind of moment It was because of some of the decision-making by Tori Lovello leading up to that Scott McGuff at bat. And some of that decision-making was not stuff that I necessarily agreed with. I don't know if it was the wrong decision. In hindsight, you could say it was the wrong decision. But in the moment, I don't think there were like idiotic moves. I just don't know if they were necessary moves. And just real quick, Scott McGuff did strike out on that A.B., not his fault. I will give Scott McGuff credit. He stood in there. He did swing at a pitch. It wasn't like he just kept the bat on his shoulders. And he took a pitch. The one they struck out on was off the plate. So Scott McGuff, I won't blame you for striking out. We'll talk about you later because there is something that I do blame you for coming from this game. But we're first going to talk about Tori Lovello and the moments leading up to that Scott McGuff at bat because it first started with what he did with Blaze Alexander around the ninth inning, because we all know Tori Lovello. He loves himself a platoon situation. We all love Tori Lovello, right? Player empowerment manager, all about bringing the good vibes to the locker room. I loved watching Lovello's pressers after every playoff game last year. 
because like we've talked about on this podcast, he was calling out all the media members. Mad Dog Russo, why haven't you retired yet after beating the Phillies in the NLCS? He was getting emotional after the D-backs lost to the Texas Rangers. Like, Tor Lavello is someone that gives a damn about his team, his players, and he wears his heart on the sleeve. But even though we love him as an emotional leader, we still have question marks about Tori Lovello when it comes to the X's and the O's of the game. I think in this finale for the New York Yankees, we saw, yeah, Tori Lovello is not always the best manager because, of course, Blaze as a right-handed bat going against a right-handed pitcher in Jonathan Lysaga, who throws very hard. Tori Lovello is like, you know what? Let me put Jace Peterson, a lefty, in this platoon situation because, of course, lefty hitters do better against righty pitchers. But guess what as well? I got a retort to that point. Blaze Alexander has been hot for like six straight weeks now. He was hot all his spring training, batting 400 in spring training. He immediately comes into the regular season, and he does not slow down. He's batted all up and down the lineup. His slash line so far in the regular season, 417, 500, 667. He had a home run in this game. So Blaze Alexander was playing really well in this game. He's been playing really well for the last six weeks, you can say, going back to spring training. And so you lifted him for a platoon player. I guess that makes sense in theory, but you're doing it for who? Jace Peterson, who is a fringe Major League Baseball player. I, I love the fact that he got in that bat in the World Series, but if Tommy Pham didn't do that, like, Jace Peterson was never going to play in that series because he's not very good, especially when it comes to swinging a bat. Jace Peterson couldn't even play for the Oakland A's last year. And when you have Blaze Alexander, like, it's in his name, hot for a multi-week stretch, I think you should have just let the young gun ride it in that situation. In extras, you decide to hit Jock Peterson, for Tucker Barnhart. Again, in theory, that's not a bad play because Jock Peterson is a way better and more ferocious hitter than Tucker Barnhart. But you can't play the platoon card here. They are both left-handed at bats. And Tucker Barnhart already had a hit in the game. So with Blaze and with Tucker, I think I can understand the reason why Toy Lovello, I see the logic. I just don't think it was necessary and because of that Perdomo gets hurt in extra innings you couldn't predict that I won't blame Toy Lovello for that but because you decided to put two bench players earlier in the game you now had to pinch run Jake McCarthy for Perdomo emptying out your bench which eventually led to Scott McGuff having to take that bat with the bases loaded in two outs in the ninth or two outs in the 11th just not good stuff by Toy Lovello in this game and it wasn't the only mistake he had. He also let Scott McGuff pitch to Aaron Judge in the 11th with first base open. Guess what? Aaron Judge tacked on another run to the Yankees lead, which is not surprising at all. So really bad stuff by our manager today. But he's not the only one getting blamed. When you look at the pie chart, he's probably getting the biggest slice, no doubt. <laughs> Toy Lovello's taking in a lot of calories off the pie he's going to be eating today. But there's still some disbursement of blame to go for the rest of the team. Just like we talked about earlier, Scott McGuff deserves some blame. He balked in a run in extra innings. I still don't even know what a balk is, but if you're able to generate one, good for you because I don't know what it is. It's still pretty rare. And to do it in extra innings with a man on third, only Scott McGuff can do that. I will say he has been good this year. But that's been in all low leverage moments, which I think are the situations McGuff should be in. McGuff in high leverage moments, very, very scary situations. And we saw it again against this New York Yankees team. Don't pitch McGuff in high leverage moments. Kevin Ginkle, someone that we love a ton, someone that we are all in on entering this season. He gave up a long home run in the 10th inning, which gave the Yankees a two run lead. We don't like to see that. We're not going to talk too much about Kevin Ginkle because he's someone that we still have a lot of faith in, but big mistake by him to give up the big lead. Thankfully, the D-backs were still able to tie it up after that, but didn't win the game. Of course, the 
whole lineup in general, two for 12 with runners in scoring position. I mean, they squandered opportunity after opportunity, and some of it was due to poor base running, which has been absolutely horrendous this year. Carroll got thrown out on the bases again. Eugenio Suarez got doubled off. Like, just really, really stupid mistakes by the D-backs on the base pass. We'll talk about why the D-backs need to get better on the bases in segment number three and what they need to do to improve in that area. So we'll talk about that later in the podcast. But man, what a squandered game by the D-backs in this finale after Merrill Kelly looks absolutely dominant against one of the best teams in baseball. The rest of the team just lets him down, which is really disappointing. D-backs off day on Thursday so they get a chance to regroup before they play the Atlanta Braves starting Friday night. And we'll talk and dive into Merrill Kelly's start against the New York Yankees and talk about how the back end of the rotation needs to step up for the D-backs as we enter this Brave series. But one thing that always steps up for your car is, of course, eBay Motors because passion drive patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. And let's talk about Merrill Kelly's start against the New York Yankees because I just want to highlight how good he was in the start before we talk about the back end of the rotation for the D-backs and what they need to do entering that Atlanta Braves series. We'll first start with Merrill Kelly, who was absolutely dominant against his New York Yankees team. And Kelly would have start like what he had against his Yankees team with what Zach Gallen did yesterday. Those two, once again, just proving to the rest of Major League Baseball, how nasty they are. They don't just do it against the Colorado Rockies. They can also do it against the New York Yankees of the world. That what makes this D-backs team so dangerous when it comes to their ceiling because when you have two frontline pitchers like Gallant and Amaro Kelly, you can go deep into the postseason with that kind of formula because of the rotation shrinking. We saw it with the D-backs just last year. It's one of the reasons why the Phillies are built for the postseason. They have a great offense, and then you have two elite pitchers. Despite the middle rotation guys for the Phillies never being that elite, they've still gone back to back to the NLCS just on the strength of those two frontline guys and the rest of their lineup. And the D-backs so far this season have the lineup. They have the two frontline guys and they have two more starters waiting to come in. The rotation is going to be so nasty. Gallon and Kelly have already shown off. Once you get Erod and Monty into this mix, it's going to be so dangerous with what the lineup has already been able to do this season. Even against the New York Yankees today in a loss, still put up five runs. You've been pretty consistent all season long outside of game one to the New York Yankees. This D-backs offense has been pretty good. Have they struggled at times or runners in score position? Yes, but you're not going to come through in that area Every single game on the whole, the D-backs offense has been really good this season. And so I can only imagine how much better this team is going to be once they add two all-star level pitchers in the middle of this rotation. Now, for Merrill Kelly, I mean, he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. And like I said before the season started, he will finish top eight in Cy Young voting. That was one of my bold predictions entering this year. Not even win the Cy Young, not even finish as a finalist, just finish top eight in Cy Young voting. He has never gotten one Cy Young vote of this season. 
or excuse me, in his career, he's never gotten one Cy Young vote. I think a start like this against the New York Yankees, an American League team, an AL East team who hasn't been to Chase Field since 2019, you don't match up with that squad very often. This is one of those games where you look at the end of the season, when you go through his game log, you're like, oh, Mer Merrill Kelly did that to start the year against the Yankees when they were absolutely nasty. Yeah, Kelly is also nasty, and this is going to be one of those games that he can put in his little resume when he submits it for the Cy Young Award at the end of the year. Kelly in this game threw six different pitches at least 10 times or more. He was working that entire arsenal the first time he's ever done that in his career. He did make one mistake in this game to Aaron Judge, who of all guys, if you're going to make a mistake to someone, uh, it's going to probably be Aaron Judge or Juan Soto. I'm not too upset at Merrill Kelly for doing it because it was only one mistake, his only mistake, and it was to the most powerful hitter in the sport. The single ball just kind of rode over the middle of the plate too much instead of going to the outside like he intended. And Aaron Judge took it for a ride. You just say respect to where respect is due. You make a mistake. Aaron Judge makes you pay for it. You move on. Merrill Kelly still had himself an elite day. Seven innings pitch, two earned runs, four strikeouts, five hits, and one walk allowed. His velo was up. His spin rates were all slightly up. We love Merrill Kelly, and he had a great start against the New York Yankees. And hopefully his start rubs off against the back end of the rotation because Henry, Fott, and Ryan Nelson are the next three due up. And guess who they get to face against Atlanta? They get to face Spencer Strider, Max Freed, and Chris Sale in that order. So it's literally three through five for the D-backs going, going against one through three for the Atlanta Braves. And with Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson, those two are now in a battle for the long reliever spot in this D-backs bullpen because neither one of them is going to be the number five starter. That is going to be fought. And if either one of them wants to stay on the active roster on the major league level, it's going to be in long relief. And so far through one turn, I, I don't think either one is looking good enough to stay on the major league roster. Henry, his first time, four innings pitch, five earned runs in his first start, and just really none of his pitches were effective. The curveball, he gave up a big slug against the sinker ball too, like just wasn't very effective. Couldn't get really anyone to, to whiff on the Colorado Rockies, which is just really disappointing to see. Brian Nelson wasn't much better. His command was all over the place against the Yankees, giving up multiple walks, like both Henry and Ryan Nelson were just super sloppy in their first starts of the year. Tommy Henry kind of up and down through spring training, so I think it's less shocking that he was disappointing in his first start. Ryan Nelson entering the year, I thought it was going to be a different Ryan Nelson. I'll admit that. One of my predictions entering the year was, could Ryan Nelson take the number five job over Fott? I feel dumb for saying that now on a podcast, and I've already rescinded it on my podcast. My new prediction is, Keta Marte will finish as a finalist for the batting title, which seems to be on track because, once again, two hits for Keta Marte. His slash line now is 379, 412, 552. So I think he's in line to potentially finish as a finalist for the batting title. So I rescind my Ryan Nelson. Could be the number five starter over Brendan Fott. Take, and we're going to need Ryan Nelson to look much better against this Braves team, just like Tommy Henry. Both those guys did not look good their first turn through. But one guy that did look good, though, Brandon Fott for the Arizona Diamondbacks, who was the number three starter in the postseason last year. His first start this year, five innings pitch, zero earned runs, zero earned runs, zero walks, six strikeouts. The D-backs are going to need him to probably replicate that performance because this Braves offense has been absolutely elite to start the year. They're right there with the D-backs in almost every offensive category to start the year. Braves are like top two in runs, average, OPS. This Braves offense is absolutely elite. When Michael Harris is like your 6-7 hitter, that tells you how deep this lineup is. And for the Ryan Nelsons and the Tommy Henrys of the world, if you can get through this series and pitch well, it's going to be a feather in your cap going forward 
for the rest of the season. So if there's ever injuries again, the D-backs can look at those two pitchers with full confidence and say, you know what, let's call them up. I know they can pull through for us in this moment. So big situations for Tommy Henry and the Ryan Nelsons of the world. They're fighting for their jobs on the Major League roster. Will they get it done? Uh, we're probably not feeling too good about their starts against this vaulted Atlanta Braves team. Really, we probably care about Fott looking dominant against the Braves because if he looks good against the Braves, that's just going to give you a little glimpse into the postseason where Fott as your number five starter and long reliever out the pen could be absolutely devastating. So I hope at least Brandon Fott dominates this upcoming series against the Atlanta Braves. And I want to talk about one way the D-backs can win this series because they need to stop with their base running mistakes if they want to beat Atlanta. So we'll talk about that in segment number three. But on a more positive note, if you want to buy tickets for an upcoming D-backs game, the best place to do that, of course, is going to be Game time, because game time is the best place for last minute ticket deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. They have flash deals, which saves you even more money with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. They have zone deals, which also save you money when you choose a section. You let game time choose the seats. You can see your view of your seat before you even walk into the arena. They have the lowest price guaranteed, like everything that you want from a ticketing service, game time offers. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time for a limited time. All users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch. Terms apply. That's code F. I-R-S-T-P-I-T-C-H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. And if you want to use the number one fancy sports app in the world to make some money, then the best place to do that is, of course, prize picks because spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entries today. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball postseason. My favorite thing to do is to take Corbin Carroll and Ketel Marte and take their RBIs and total bases, and hopefully that nets me some money. And if you want to net some money, download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, all right. Let's get back to the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. If you like the show, please follow me on Twitter at CreatorThomas24 for the personal account or look up Locked on Dimebacks about Twitter and Instagram for the podcast handle. But now let's get back to the pod and let's talk about the D-backs and their base running mistakes because it has been an issue for the team this year, they have so many self-inflicted wounds. And this finale against the New York Yankees, just another example of the mistakes that they've been making all season long against the Rockies. They were able to get away with it a little bit because, again, you're playing against the Colorado Rockies. But against a team like the New York Yankees, they made you pay for it. And it's one of the reasons why you're only able to win one game in the series. Base running was a strength of this team just last season but so far in 2024 uh it's been more of a weakness than a strength and i just don't know why when you look at this team they still got a lot of the speed that they had from last season so i don't think that's the issue i don't think over aggression is the issue like i don't think they're trying to be greedy on the base pass i don't think that's a problem what i think the problem is for the d-backs right now when it comes to base running it just 
lack of IQ and awareness is getting like picked off. It's running when you're not supposed to. It's, you know, being caught in no man's land on line drives. Like it's really stupid little league stuff that is costing the D-backs wins and making the D-backs, you know, have mistakes on the base pass right now. It just lack of IQ plays right now from this D-back team, which is just not something that you expect. Cormac Carroll already gotten caught twice this year. Like this is someone that stole 50 plus bases last year. Didn't get caught that many times. And so far this year just doesn't look the same. Like the scouting report is the league adjusting to when he likes to go. Did Corbin lose a step? I don't think that's the case, but just hasn't been playing smart baseball on the base paths. Same with Jake McCarthy. He hasn't been the greatest on the base paths either. Like, we know Jake the Rake and Corbin Carroll want to steal and get aggressive whenever they can, but it feels like they've just had a lack of awareness right now when they do get on the bases. We've also seen some of the slower guys get doubled up on the bases, which you just don't want. Tori Lovello has been fuming the last couple of weeks with some of the base pass mistakes he's seen. And you do have to wonder if that is a reflection on leadership because you saw in this finale to the New York Yankees, right? Some very poor decision making and execution by Tori Lovello. So if you wonder if any of that trickles down to the players, are they being coached and managed to be the best versions of themselves when it comes to being on the base paths? Are they being managed to be high IQ players when they're on the bases? Maybe some of, some of it is on the messaging from Tori Lovello and leadership. So it is something to monitor as we go forward because this was a D-backs team that wreaked havoc on the bases last year. And so far, they've only wreaked havoc to, to themselves when they've been on the bases. Last year, they were second in steals and second in steal percentage, which means they were not getting caught very often. They were also, uh, last year, they were also third in the extra base taken percentage. So they were aggressive on the base pass and it worked out. They were smart and aggressive on the base pass. This year, they are bottom third in the league in extra base taken percentage. They have not been able to move their runners up when they want to. And like I said, they didn't really lose any of the speed that they had from last year. We added the power and we kept the speed. So why are the D-backs being so much worse on the bases? It's an area that they have to immediately clean up and improve, especially going against this Atlanta Braves team, which is absolutely loaded from the rotation where we're seeing the top three starters and the lineup where everyone is healthy. It is absolutely nasty what the Braves put out there on the field. You have to play really clean baseball and execute at a high level. And the D-backs have not been executing at a high level through the first two series. If they don't get their base running together, they will lose the Atlanta Braves. Now, I will say playing small ball is going to be a little bit tougher without the Perdomos and the Thomases of the world. But when it comes to just getting thrown out on the bases via pickoff or getting doubled up, that is something that can immediately change. That is an IQ issue with the Arizona Dimebacks. It's something that can be fixed right now. So for the Diamondbacks, if you want to have any chance against the Atlanta Braves, you're going to need the back end of your rotation to step up. The Henrys, the Fots, the Ryan Nelsons, they're going to have to look like frontline starters or at least mid-rotation starters. And you're going to have to stop with these self-inflicted wounds. Stop getting thrown out on the bases and come through a little bit more at runners in scoring position, please. But most importantly, stop getting thrown out on the bases. We know you have speed. We know you're fast, but we don't get to see your speed if every time you take off, you get thrown out. So please, please, please be smarter all around Arizona Dimebacks. Now that's it for this edition of the Lockdown Dimebacks podcast. Come back tomorrow for more Dimebacks news coverage and insight. Technically, the next podcast you get will either be really late Thursday or Friday morning. That would be the last podcast of the week. We're recording with Jake Mastriani of Locked on Braves doing a little preview of the series. So be on the lookout for that. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Dope sense.